Hey everybody, this is a video for my 30S uh, pre-calculus honor students. And this is us starting chapter 6, Rational Expressions and Equations. This booklet was designed, um, I think it was put together with the idea that this might be the chapter that people did when they were away on the band trip or something. And it actually um, has a QR code that's supposed to take you to some um, uh, Khan Academy videos, but I don't know if the links to the Khan Academy videos are still uh, live. This was, booklet was made a few years ago, and Khan Academy has since uh, redone some of their videos and shifted them around. Um, if you're stuck on some of the fraction ideas that are happening here, not just the algebra, but just basic fraction calculations themselves, then uh, this link does, I think, still work, and there's some really good practice on arithmetic there that you might want to look at if you're a little lost with the whole concept of things like multiplying fractions or adding and subtracting using common denominators. Um, but again, you can try the QR code, see if it works, but I'm just going to basically do the Khan Academy type videos here myself. Um, and we're going to start with some basic definitions. Um, I'm also going to start by turning on another light. Hold on a sec here. Oh, that's a bit better. There we go. Okay, so first, a uh, rational expression means that you have some sort of polynomial divided by another polynomial. And remember, polynomials can be even just, uh, um, well, they can be like these guys. They could even be monomials. 1 over x is a rational expression. m over m plus 1, x squared minus 4 over 2, etc. Non-permissible value is any value that would create... Um, a division by zero. Um, oh, I didn't mean to be finished that sentence. We'll create a division by zero when substituted into the variable. So um, we, we had this, uh, this uh, came up in the last unit when we were talking about tangent. Remember that the tangent of 90 degrees is 1 over 0. But the tangent of, say, 0 or 180 degrees is 0 over 1. This is just 0, right? The tangent of 0 degrees is 0 because 0 divided by 1 is 0. 1 divided by 0, though, does not have an answer. It's undefined. It is the unbreakable rule of all of mathematics that you cannot divide by 0. Even 0 can't be divided by 0. So with that in mind, we are going to look for non-permissible values for just about everything we do in this unit. Uh, a rational equation is, of course, an equation involving, that's a V, oh my word, oh my hand froze, good, oh I thought it was going to freeze long enough so you didn't see my terrible mistake of printing there. Uh, it is an equation involving um, a polynomial over a polynomial. So at least somewhere in the equation you have to deal with a fraction element or term that is the term involves a polynomial over a polynomial. So in other words it's an equation that has something that looks like one of these guys in it. Alright, so example one, um, let's look for non-permissible values. So in example one now, the way that we write non-permissible values doesn't really matter to me. Different books uh, and different teachers, different textbooks, they're all going to kind of have their own kind of way of doing it. There, there isn't so much a standard across all of mathematics. Some people would write it as, well, the non-permissible value is when m, in this case, is equal to negative 1. Because if m was negative 1, then you'd have negative 1 plus 1 is 0. You'd have m divided by 0. And no matter what m is, it can't be divided by 0. So. Um, this this is one way to write it. The other way to write it is to just write that you know m cannot equal negative one, and I I tend to use both. Uh, I'm very happy with with both of those uh, those notations. This one obviously x cannot equal zero. This one obviously doesn't have no no non permissive values. There's no problem with this one. X can be anything you want. You could even say x is an element of all reals because 2 can't ever be a 0. Um, here, what's my non-permissible value here? What would make this 0? Well, to figure out what would make that 0, I actually have to factor it. So I'm going to factor it to y squared minus 1 over y 
plus 1 squared. So in this case, y cannot equal negative 1. Okay, so there's example 1, example 2. Let's factor that guy. If I factor this, I get x minus 3, x minus 2. So my non-permissible values are when x is 2 and 3. And yeah, you can just write them uh, with a comma between them. I'm going to try focusing this a little better. I think that helps. Uh, these two things can be written with a comma between them. Whatever you do, though, don't put brackets around it because then it's going to make it look like you think that it's a coordinate. It's not. This is not an xy coordinate. This is two different numbers that if x were those numbers, this thing can't exist because you can't divide by zero. All right, example three. Hmm. Simplify and state non-permissible values. Okay, so here's how we're going to do simplify. We're actually going to factor everything first. And once again, I seem to be freezing and I don't know why. This wasn't happening yesterday. Very, very strange. Maybe I've got too many things open. Let's let's uh, let's close some stuff. Um, I don't think I need any of these. Close that. I don't think I need any of these right now. Let's close all those. Okay, maybe that'll help. Anyways, like I was saying, we're going to factor the top and bottom here. So what can I factor out of the top? Remember the first rule of factoring is um, look for a common factor, and they all have a 2x in them, so I'm going to factor 2x out of the top, and that's going to leave me with an x squared minus a 2x minus 15, and on the bottom, I'm going to factor out a 4x, and that's going to leave me with an x minus 5. Okay, I can factor this numerator, and if you're struggling with the factoring, if, if what I'm doing is like going over your head, you got to go back and review some grade 10 factoring. It is an absolutely key skill that you cannot live without in higher levels of math. And at the bottom is still 4x times x minus 5. Now, make sure that you understand what canceling is. I'm going to do some canceling. Those two factors cancel. Remember that you can cancel factors, you can't cancel terms. Remember back here uh, a minute ago we had this guy? You'd be amazed at how many students I would have who would look at this and go, oh yeah, I can cancel those m's. No, you can't. That's not how canceling works. Think about it. If you had 3 over 3 plus 1, which is clearly 3 quarters, can you, fact, can you, can you just cancel those 3's and say, oh, so it's 1 over 2? Is a half equal to 3 over 4? No. You can only cancel factors, you cannot cancel terms. So this is 2 times x times x minus 5, so this is a factor, this is a factor, they're cancelable. Because this factor divided by this factor is 1. And if you're thinking, but you have to times all those together before you divide. No, you're not. You know you don't have to do that. Remember that bed mass and BEMDAS really are the same thing. It doesn't matter which way, you, which order you put those two letters. So it doesn't matter. If I told you what x was as a number and you times all this out and then divided by all this, it wouldn't matter if you did this divide first. Keeping that in mind, x divided by x is also 1, and 2 goes into 4 twice. So this whole thing simplifies down to x plus 3 over 2. But this thing only simplifies to this thing if I avoid x being, well, if this x is 0, then I have 0 times something, which of course is 0 so the denominator is 0 that's no good and of course x is 5 so what we're saying is that this thing simplifies to that thing for every number in the universe except 0 and 5 for those two numbers this thing doesn't exist at all and if you wanted to prove that to yourself pick uh, pick a number let's pick one one's easy to work with what if this x was 1? I'd have 2 times 1 cubed minus 4 times 1 squared minus 30 times 30 times 1 all over 4 times 1 squared minus 20 times 1. And that actually is 2 minus 4 minus 30. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2 minus 30 is negative 32. And down here I have 4 minus 20, which is negative 16, which is 2. And if I plug a 1 in there, I get 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And that'll work with any number. It won't always be 2, but any number, if I plug it in through here and plug it in through there, it should be the same thing. Because these two expressions are equivalent, but this one has been simplified. And I mean, look at it. It's definitely simpler than all that mess. But this only simplifies to that if I avoid those x values. So that's something to keep in mind. That's example three. Let's move on. 
Now, example four is going to ask us to multiply rational expressions. Remember in junior high when you learned how to do your fraction skills in grade seven, they taught you how to add and subtract fractions. And then in grade eight, they taught you how to multiply and divide. And you're like, oh, this is actually easier than adding and subtracting because in multiplying and dividing, you don't need common denominators. And hopefully when you learned how to multiply fractions, you learned that you can, of course, look for, and I did this in class the other day, you can look for cancels, right? I mean, yes, I could have done this by going 2 thirds times 3, oh, I'm off the page, times 3 quarters is 6 over 12, and then simplify it to that. But this is more efficient and better, and it's the way we're going to think about this one. We are going to change it. We're going to change it to its factored form. So it's going to be, I'm going to factor 2x out of the top, leaving me x squared plus 5x plus 6. I'm going to factor 2x out of the bottom, leaving me x plus 7. Uh, the top's already factored nicely, x plus 7. And the bottom is a difference of squares, x plus 3, x minus 3. And again, here's where, if you're going, how did he do that so quick? You are going to need to do some grade 10 review. Okay, I'm going to change this up here. Oh, wait, what am I doing? I meant to factor this. Sorry, forgot what I was doing. So let's factor that. So this is, of course, an x and an x. And this one's already factored. It's x plus 7. This one's already factored. It's x plus 7. And down here, I have x plus 3 x minus 3. Lovely. Okay, this now, this is an x. Sorry for my messy writing. Okay, what two numbers times to make 6 and add to make 5? Plus 3, plus 2. That and that are factors that cancel. That and that are factors that cancel. 2x divided by 2x is 1. I am left with x plus 2 over x minus 3. And that is my reduce. And I hate the word reduce. We're not supposed to use the word reduce. We're supposed to use the word simplify. I think I mentioned that in class too. That, you know, think about it. Back when you were doing grade 6 or 7 fraction simplification, back in the old days we used to call that reducing fractions. But this is not smaller than that. They're the same exact thing. So the word reduce means make smaller is a half smaller than two-fourths. If you had a half of a pizza, is that somehow less than two-quarters of the pizza? No. So we should use the word simplify. Anyway, state non-permissible values. So that was actually, I guess I should have done that in step two. I was so excited to do my canceling that I kind of missed that step, but I'll do it right now. The non-permissible values. Now, do I just go, oh, x can't be three? No, 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 no x can't be anything that would have made the original thing zero. So you got to go. That's why it actually tells you to find the NPVs before you simplify. These denominator factors can't be zero. Not any of them. There's four factors here. One, two, three, four. Not a single one of those factors could be zero. Because think about it. This times this times this times this. Zero times anything is zero. So um, my non-permissive values are zero. I guess Oh, I should put x equals one. 0, negative 7, comma, and then 3 or negative 3. So this one, if negative 3 was here, you'd get 0. If positive 3 was here, you'd get 0. So feel free to write plus or minus like that when you have both. And there you go. There's your non-permissible values. There's your simplified form. All done. All right. What's the difference between multiply and divide? Well, divide has one extra step. Remember that a divide is a multiply if you multiply the reciprocal. Again, think back to grade eight fractions. When you were taught, say for example, what's one half divided by one quarter? You could do that in your head. How many quarters goes into a half? Well, two of them, right? One quarter plus one quarter is two quarters. So how do you actually do that calculation? You change it like so. Ta -da! Change the divide to times the reciprocal. So let's do that here. But we'll factor first. So first we're gonna factor. So we have x plus seven over, the bottom there is x plus three, x minus three again. And we are going to divide. Now I'm actually gonna kind of do these two steps at once. I'm gonna change divide to times the reciprocal. So I'm gonna factor this one on the top. So that's gonna be three x. And then if you take three x out of those two things, you have x minus three. 
And then on the bottom here, it's going to be open two brackets and ask yourself, say self, what two numbers times to make 14 but add to make nine? You'll see that it's plus two and plus seven. And now, before we do any of our canceling, right, let's state our MPVs. And again, it's simplify. Feel free to even say cancel if you like, but don't call it reducing. It ain't reducing. <sighs> okay, what do we do? Well, let's find our MPVs. What are the non-permissible values here? Well, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, here's a denominator and here's a denominator, but you know what? I have to worry about this too. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, that's a numerator. You, you said just a little while ago that zero divided by one was okay. That's, that's zero. But what if I said, yeah, but think about it, I'm dividing by this. So suppose I had some number, I don't know, like that, divided by this. Well, this thing, if this whole fraction zero, I'm stuck with two divided by zero and you can't divide by zero undefined so not this entire number can't be zero so that means I have to worry about this numerator and think about it didn't this new numerator used to be a denominator so there's one two three different levels here where you can't have a factor of zero so X can't be zero it can't be three it can't be negative three and again you could have wrote plus or minus it can't be negative two, and it can't be negative seven. So there is one, two, three, four, five different numbers in this universe that would make this thing not even exist. But if you avoid those five numbers, you can say that cancels that, that cancels that, and you are left with, um, let's see, what are we left with here? You are left with uh, a 3x on top, and an x plus three, times an x plus 2 on the bottom. Now, um, as far as I'm concerned, that's a good answer. I'd, I'd probably leave it like that. A textbook might multiply the bottom out. I'll tell you, if it was three different factors, it would not bother to multiply it out. I mean, why get an x cubed? Blech. But if you did want to foil that out, it's just x squared plus 5x plus 6. But I actually kind of like this answer better. OK? So do you see why this, even though it only has two factors down here, you had to worry about all of the factors on this level, this level, and this level. So you had five non-permissible values. That's an important idea. And make sure it makes sense to you. All right, so that was page three. Page four. They aren't always binomials and trinomials. Sometimes you just get monomials, but they're big, ugly monomials that have lots of different factors within them. So I'm just going to do this one by kind of just canceling as I go. Let me sharpen my pencil so I can cancel a little better. All right, where's my cancels here? Where are my cancels at? Well, 16 and 8 share a factor of 8. So that's a 1 and a 2. 3 goes into itself once into 9 three times. A goes into A squared. So I'm just going to cancel the squared because it does leave A to the 1 down here. And x to the, or sorry, let's do the b now. b goes into b squared. So again, I'll cancel the squared. So it's just a b. Uh, x to the 4 goes into x to the 5 and leaves x to the 1. So again, I'll just cancel the, the uh, exponent. So I know that it's an exponent of 1 now. And y squared goes into y to the 4, but it leaves an exponent of 2. So what's left here? I have 2 times, well, I have 2 times doesn't look like much, right? 2 times nothing. Um, well, there's still a y squared, right? Oh, there's an x too. There's two xy squared. So two xy squared. Um, and on the bottom, I have three and an a and a b. And there we have it. Oh yeah, non-permissible values. These ones are easy, right? Basically, x, y, a, and b can't be zero. Right, because you'd be multiplying by zero. Okay, uh, number two, remember that we have to, can I start canceling now? No, you can't do the canceling until you are in multiply mode. So I would times by the reciprocal. All right, now we look for cancels. Five goes into itself once into 10 twice. Six uh, has a common factor with nine of three, so that's a two and a three. Uh, x, I, you know what, I think I'm going to just collect this now. 1 times x times y times 3, so that's 3, 
times x cubed times y cubed. So an x times an x cubed is an x to the 4. A y times a y squared is a y cubed. And 2 times 2 is 4. And x squared times another x is x cubed. And y times another y squared is y cubed. That and that divide to make 1. This goes into that and cancels its exponent and makes it a 1. And I am looking at 3x over 4. What were my non-permissible values? Once again, I just have to make sure that x and y are not 0. All right, that's 1 and 2. Now with some big boy factoring. OK. I think I'm going to do 4 before 3, because 4 is actually a little easier, So, because I don't have to worry about the times the reciprocal thing. So I'm going to factor the top here. What does this factor do? Well, this is x plus um, 2 times x plus 3. The denominator here is x minus 5 times x minus 1. The numerator here is x plus 6 times x minus 5. And the denominator there is x plus 6 times x plus 3. And I see cancels. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Before I write down my final answer, though, what were the non permissible values? The non permissible values were anything that would have made a denominator 0 which would be 5, 1, negative 6, and negative 3. So there's my non-permissible values. But other than that, this thing simplifies all the way down to x plus 2 over x minus 1. And once again, pick your favorite number that isn't one of those numbers. I'd avoid 0 for this, for this little game, too. Um, mainly because, you know, 0 gets weird, right? 0 times anything is 0. 0 plus anything is itself. So uh, pick a number like 2 or 3 or 7 or 18, whatever your favorite number is. Run it through all that mess and run it through here, and you should get the same value. Okay, number 3 is just like number 2, or number 4, only it does have a divide. So I'm going to do two steps at once here. I'm going to factor the top. So that's m. What two numbers times to make negative 4 add to make negative 3? It's minus 4 and plus 1. Down here, I'm going to factor out an m. And then I'm going to times the reciprocal. So I'm actually turning this denominator into a numerator. And I'm factoring it at the same time. So that's m plus 5, m minus 3. And down here, that's going to be m minus 3, m minus 4. OK, let's do the non-permissible values while we're doing it here. So NPV, am I on the screen? My non-permissible values are, OK, remember, this was a divide. So here, here, and here, you can't have a 0. So on this level, m can equal 0 or negative 5. On this level, still negative 5, and this time 3. And on this level, 3, which I already got, and 4. OK, let's simplify. Bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, bye bye. And look at that. I get m plus 1 over m. Right on. OK, that was page 4. Here again is one of the places where they wanted you to watch a Khan Academy video to learn how to actually, we're moving now into what's called solving equations with rational expressions. And this is actually the 6.3 part of the chapter. And OK, so what do we do with this thing? Well, first things first is I'm going to find my non-permissible values. So what are my non-permissible values? Well. This one's a little tougher. We haven't had one that's quite this, this interesting before. But remember, 8, 8 doesn't have any denominator to worry about. It's got a 1 in the denominator, no variable. But here, I'm going to actually solve this one. Negative 3x minus 2 can't equal 0, right? So I'm going to say then that negative 3x can't equal 2, basically moving the 2 to the other side using the basic rules of algebra, which you can use with a non-equal sign the same way you can with an equal sign. And then I divide both sides by negative 3. And x cannot equal negative 2 thirds. Um, OK. So if you plug negative 2 thirds in for x, you'd get a 0 on the denominator, and you can't have that. So that's the only non-permissible value. So now I'm going to solve for x, because now we're, we're actually uh, solving. Solve. Oh, I'm circling a word you can't see. Solve the equation. Solving. So now I basically have to solve this thing and then check, oh, wait a minute. Is my solution that? Because if it is. There is no solution. Can't have that. So let's try this out. We are going to, what we're going to do is we're going to times both sides of the equation by negative 3x minus 2. You can do that to an equation. Just times both sides by the same number. All right. If we do that, 
it cancels on this side and I'm left with 14x plus 4 and over here I'm left with minus 24x minus 16 okay now I'm going to move my x's to one side so that's 14 plus 24 which is 38x I'm going to move my 4 to the other side which is negative 20 then I'm going to divide both sides by 38 and then I'm going to lose half a mark if I lift that as my final answer because that does simplify I do not want a decimal thank you very much okay do not go to decimals unless there is decimals to begin with in the question we want fractions okay this is all about our fraction skills decimals aren't allowed again unless you had a question that started with decimals all right um, so there's our non permissible value is this the same as that nope so then that's the answer now just like any piece of algebra you can check your answer it's a little bit hairy because you've got this fraction, but hey, this should work. 14 times negative 10 ninetieths plus 4 over negative 3 times negative 10 ninetieths minus 2 should equal 8. This equation should balance. That's how verifies work in algebra, right? Plug in the number and the left and right side should be equal. Now, when you're doing a verify, you should, you're not allowed to move things from one side to the other. I'm sorry, you have to stick with this thing and figure it out and simplify it down to see if it's an 8. 14 times negative 10 is not that hard. That's negative 140. And that's plus 4 over 3 times 10. And the negatives cancel. That's 30 over 19 minus 2. And okay, so the top here, 4. I'm going to need a common denominator of 19s. Okay, so what is 4 if you change that if you multiply it by 19 over 19? Well, 4 19s, 4 20s would be 80. So this is 76. And down here, I have to change 2 into 19ths. So 2 19ths is 38, so that's 30 minus 38 over 19. And that doesn't look much like an 8, but bear with it. It actually is, because this numerator is negative 140 plus 76. If you added 70, you'd get negative 70. Take away 6 more, you get negative 64. And down here, 30 minus 38 is negative 8. And check that out, that's actually working out really nice. How do you divide in fraction land? You times by the reciprocal. And oh, even the negatives cancel, and yep, it is eight. We have proven that is the right answer. Check mark. So, that's a lot of work. <laughs> Unless you've got loads of time on a test, I don't know that I'd bother going through that. I'd just kind of double check my algebra and make sure I had the right answer. All right, these get harder. Check this out. This time they're being very nice to us. They're already telling us what the non-permissible value is. Oh, thank you for doing that, but I could have figured it out for myself, but okay, where x can't be two. So let's see, x cannot be two. What am I gonna do with this thing? Well, I'm gonna do the same trick that I did up here. I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by this denominator to get rid of it. That's gonna make this one kind of, kind of tough. When I multiply this thing by the denominator, of course it goes away, but careful, it's, minus this whole thing, minus this whole thing. So you're going to distribute that negative. And on, don't forget the other side of the equation has to be multiplied by this denominator as well. So I multiplied this, this, and this by x minus 2. Here it's a multiply, here it's a multiply, and in the middle it just cancelled my denominator. This one's going to be kind of nasty. You're going to get an x cubed out of this. So, um, or, wait a minute, or, or, what do you notice here? Hey, wait a minute. That's a difference of squares. That is x plus 2, x minus 2. Hey, I think I just saved myself having to work with an x cubed because now I can divide each part of the equation by x minus 2. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. So this is x squared minus x minus 2 equals 4. Ooh, that's nice. Now, this is where you might not know what to do. This is where you might be a little on the stuck side. This is actually something we learned how to do in grade 11. How do you solve a, an equation that has an x squared in it when it has other things like x's? Well, remember back here, when I was solving a linear equation, I put all the x's on one side and all the constants on the other. Yeah, when you're solving what we call a quadratic equation because it has an x squared in it, you actually move everything to one side. So minus 4 from that and you get minus 6. And then you try to factor it. Waha! So we're going to try to factor this thing. So factoring this thing would be, let's see, what two numbers times to make negative 6 and add to make 0? Well, it would be minus 3 
and plus two. So hopefully that's making some sense to you. Now you ask yourself, you say self, this number times this number is zero according to my equation. Well, the only way you times numbers and get zero is if one of the numbers is zero. So this number could be zero or this number could be zero and hold on. Is this an answer? Wait, x can't be 2. Oh, but x could be negative 2. Negative 2 is OK, because that wouldn't make a negative, that wouldn't make a 0 in the denominator. So there you go. There's two answers to this one. x is 3, and x is negative 2. They are both good answers. They both work. You could plug them in and check them if you felt like it. OK, that was example 7. They're getting harder. Ah, now we're moving on to example 8. And let's see, so what are the restrictions? This time they're not telling us. So the non-permissible values are p is equal to 1 and negative 3. Those are the two numbers you can't have. But I am going to have to multiply both sides of the equation by both denominators. On this side, the p minus 1 will cancel. So it'll just be 4 times p minus 3. And on this side, the p plus 3 will cancel. So it's just 5 times p minus 1. Most people are sitting at home going, wait a minute, isn't that what I would call cross multiplying? Yes, you can move this up to there, that up to there. That only works because there is no additional factor here, or no additional term. Had this been the same thing, had this been 4 over p minus 1 equals 5 over p plus 3 plus 2, this extra thing then would kind of make my life harder. I'd have to multiply both, all three terms here by both denominators, which would have meant that this is the same, this is the same, but then I would have had plus 2 times the two denominators. Okay, So that's a little harder if there's extra things. But if it's just a ratio equals a ratio, then yeah, cross multiply to your heart's content. And by cross multiply, it's what people think when they think I have a ratio equals a ratio. This moves up to here and times this. This moves up to here and times this. And it looks like that when I'm done. There's not really such a thing as cross multiplying. Really, I'm doing two steps of algebra. I'm multiplying both sides of the equation by both denominators, and then it's canceling the one that's already there and leaving behind the one that isn't. So none of that makes it any harder to solve. Don't forget to distribute both of them. And then I think I'll move the p's to the other side and the, the negative over there. So negative 12 plus 5 is negative, what would that be, negative 7 is equal to p. So there we go, p is equal to negative 7. Sweet. OK, so that was number eight. Um, number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. That's not the right answer. Ah, do you see what I did? OK, can you find my error? Copy error. Wah, wah. So that's actually, let's see, when I move the five over, it becomes actually plus 17. Oh, that was a mistake. Plus 17. That is a plus 17. There we go. You know how I caught that mistake? Because I kind of looked at it, and I've plugged so many numbers into things like that. It's like, ooh, there's no way a negative would make that side equal that side. Can you see how I kind of knew that? Because if I put a negative over here, I'd have 4 over negative 8. So that's like negative a half. There's no way a negative 7 makes this negative a half. Ta-da. So there you go. A little check. Caught my error. Example 9. Number 9, number 9. And once again, they're being nice. They're telling us the NPV, so we don't have to find it. But again, we have to find the LCM. So what is the LCM here? Uh, I was talking to my class about this just the other day. And I was just kind of reminiscing about adding those two fractions and said, you know, I, I've many a, many a junior high would say, oh, the common denominator here is 48. And I'll times this side by 8 and this side by 6. But really, they're timesing by 8 over 8 and 6 over 6. But that's kind of not the lowest common denominator, right? We want the lowest. If you think about these two things and say, well, I know it's 24. How did you get 24? Well, you probably skip counted. That's the way I usually do it. I just kind of go 6, 12, 18, 24, 8, 16, 24. And since 24 is the first number in both lists, I go, yay, it has to be 24. And this number to get to 24 had to be times by 4 over 4. And this number had to be times by 3 over 3. And it's 7 over, I'm off this page, 24. But, here's the but. That skip count thing that I found to get to 24, that doesn't work with pieces of algebra. Not so easily anyway. So what's the other way that they taught you how to find a lowest common denominator or a lo least common multiple? And the answer is, you thought about factors. 
and you realized, aha, this one is missing the 4, so I have to times it by 4 over 4. This one's missing the 3, so I have to times it by 3 over 3. And that's where I get 4 times 1, 3 times 1, and the common denominator of 4 times 2 times 3, which is 24. That's the way I'm going to think about this guy. Factor this up a little. And by factor it up, I mean, what does this break down to? Well, it actually breaks down to 2 times 3 times 3. So what is this thing here missing from that? Well, the LCM here, I guess, really, is a 2 right, times an x times a 3 times a 3. So basically, 18x is my lowest common multiple. So this one's missing the two 3s. So it's going to be multiple, which 3 times 3 is 9. So I'm going to multiply this one by 9 over 9. This one is missing um, 6. 6 would get me to 18x, right? So it's multiplied by 6 over 6. And I don't know why I didn't leave myself a little more room for that, because I wasn't thinking. And what is this missing? It's already got an 18, but ah, it's missing an x. So my new common denominator here is 9 times 5, 4 times 6, and 7 times x. And if you're wondering, hey, where did the denominator go? Well, how about I just multiplied every part of the equation by the LCM? So I just multiplied by 18x, multiplied by 18x, and multiplied by 18x. Now, I wouldn't show this many confusing looking steps on a question like this, but that is logically what's happening. Where did the 45 come from? Well, it was the 9 times the 5. Where did the 24 come from? Well, it was the 6 times the 4. And why is 7 now 7x? Because I had to multiply top and bottom by x. So 45 minus 24 is 21. And x equals 3. And you can do a check. Does, again, that work? Does x really equal 3? I don't know. Let's see. 5 over 6 minus 4 over 9 has to equal 7 eighteenths. And let's see, common denominator is 18. I have to times top here by 3, and top there by 2. And yep, 15 minus 8 is 7. Yay, it's 2, it's 2. That is the right answer. Finally, example 10. Ooh, once again, they're being nice. They tell us our x equals negative 2 is our non-permissible value. But I'm going to actually multiply both sides of this equation by x plus 2 because you can do that. You can times both sides of the equation by a number. And in this case, it just cancels the denominators. x squared is equal to 4. Now normally, this has two answers, right? What number times itself is 4? Oh, well, 2 and negative 2. But ah, negative 2 can't be an answer. So the only answer we've got is 2. Cool. So now what you're going to do with the rest of this booklet is you are going to try to do the rest of the notes yourself. Actually, what we've done here is we've done some examples from each one of the chapters in the unit booklet. So hopefully that's enough for you to actually uh, get the examples done yourself. Mr. Lacko is going to make a couple of videos that I'll link to where he's going to show you some of the, uh, the examples and uh, you can fill them in. And I'm going to post an actual answer key so that you can uh, try to fill in the notes yourself and then check my answer key and see how you did. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day.